So we're at Hot Box Roasters today, drinking some cold brew, and I got Mike Murphy right here. What's up? What's up? So he's actually the roaster, the everything guy for uh, Hot Box Roasters. So we're gonna go in and check it out. Let's do it. What are we looking at, Mike? So this is the Hot Box Roasters roasting room. We built this about a year ago. Um, and the reason we built it is because we wanted to be in a clean facility to make sure we're providing you the best coffee. Sweet. Um, so behind me here, this is going to be all of our green coffee. Um, so when we get coffee, it's unroasted and it comes in these burlap sacks. And what we're doing is putting them in these bins because it makes it a little easier for us to put in the roasting machine. Eight different coffees from eight different origins or places in the world. My personal favorite is going to be our Costa Rican coffee or the Ethiopia. Some of these coffees stay as a single origin, so they're just a single coffee. Um, but we also have five different blends, so we're taking two of these coffees and blending them together. Yeah, so we sell whole bean coffee on our online store at hotboxrushes.com. And you can get on a subscription service where we'll send you coffee like weekly, monthly, bi-weekly. So you never have to worry about going to the store or running out of coffee. That's I, pretty awesome. Yeah, I hate going to the store. And it's hot box coffee, man. Yeah, so the way we source, um, we like to use people that we know. Um, so we keep it very intimate. We like to stay away from certifications because a lot of the smaller farmers can't afford those things, um, but they're following those practices. So organic is something that happens a lot in coffee, but these people can't afford that certification. Um, so we follow through with these farmers, make sure that they're, you know, doing the right things. Um, but, you know, we like to work with people we can call up on the phone and say, hey, this is what we're looking for, and they can give us that. Um, and we also work with importers throughout the country that can bring those copies in for us. These barrels actually are whiskey barrels. They came from Four Roses. Um, at one point after they had whiskey in them, they had Oscar Blues 1050 Imperial Stout. Nice. And then we stole them from the brewery and we put green coffee in there. And what we did with that afterwards is roasted it up and then we have barrel aged coffee. The guy who started Oscar Blues Brewery, Dale Katechis, um, started roasting coffee for fun like three and a half years ago and thought, hey, we should take this a little bit more seriously. And we have hot box roasters. All right, and if you guys didn't know, I mean, outside of biking, my other passions are beer and coffee. So that's actually why we're here, and that's why I'm talking with Mike. Uh, I met Mike on a ride, and actually, you can check out my uh, video. I'll put a link somewhere below uh, of Mike and uh, a couple other guys from Oscar Blues oh, yeah. um, just kind of shredding up. These guys are shredders, so awesome riders. All right, so what are we going to do next? So we're going to roast you some coffee. Uh, you told me you like the Pike's Place roast from Starbucks, so we're going to try and emulate that as much as possible. Okay. Um, so we're going to take some of this Honduras coffee here. Um, we're going to take the green coffee and weigh it out to about two pounds, and we'll roast it up fresh for you. That's awesome. So these bins are super convenient. Not only do they make getting coffee out very easy, but they keep the coffee very safe, which is very important. So, there's some green coffee. So this is actually the first roaster that Hot Box Roasters ever roasted on. Um, Dale Katechis bought this thing, was roasting for fun. Um, we saw him doing it and we're like, damn, this could be really cool. So, here we are. Um, this thing will do about two pounds at a time. Very fun to roast on. This is now what we do all of our samples on. So we're gonna dump some beans in the top, get it warmed up, rock and roll. With this roaster right here behind you is what we're roasting all of our production stuff on at this point. It looks like a rocket ship. This is a Loring Kestrel 35, so it's about 70 pounds in volume is what it can do. Wow. Very similar to a rocket ship. It uses a jet burner basically <laughs> to heat up. <laughs> nice. Um, it's very easy to roast coffee on just because of the technology that it comes with. Yeah. Um, so it means that we can put out a superior product and we really like that about that. So we're just going to pull this lift up and the beans are going to go into the roasting drum. Ooh, now we're roasting. So if you look into this little slight glass here, the coffee beans are in there rolling around in the drum. There's two burners underneath there that run off natural gas. And what that's doing is just heating that drum up. I can control my gas here. So depending on what I want to achieve with the coffee, I can control it all right there. All right, so what are we looking at? So right now we're hitting a color change stage in roasting coffee. So you can see that color has changed quite a bit from the original like whitish green color. Right. Um, so right now we're just, we're hitting about 330 degrees on the roast. Okay. 
so yeah, we're, we're starting to get somewhere you can smell, the smell is, like the smell is getting more fragrant. Um, I wish it was smell of I wish who's smell. watching is going to be able to smell it. It smells really good. It smells so good. This is my favorite smell during we're this process. So we're getting pretty close to another stage in coffee called first crack and that's when the coffee starts to pop so it's making a crack noise. You can also hit a second crack. We don't take any of our coffees there really. Shortly after that is when we're going to dump the coffee out into this cooling tray here. Now you can start to hear what we call first crack. Um, it's very faint right now. It's about to start getting really loud so it's those beans basically cracking open. So. You listen real close, you can hear pop, 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 like popcorn almost. So there's basically a vacuum motor pulling air through the coffee beans, so we're trying to cool them down as fast as possible. This roaster is super small, so it doesn't have an agitator that spins the beans around like the bigger ones, so I get to be the human agitator. So we just got done roasting up that Honduras, so we're going to package it up. So we package all of our whole bean coffee, or most of our whole bean coffee at this point, in this can here, which is called a crowler. This is an Oscar Blues invention, um, usually used to fill up 32 ounces of beer. We put 12 ounces of coffee in it, so I'm just going to write the Hondo on it. Today's day, the 16th, and then we're going to put 12 ounces of beans in here. Boom, 12 ounces. So then we'll take this can here and we're going to seal it up on this machine. This is why this thing is perfect for beer, works real great for coffee too, super simple. So we're just going to latch that close, boom. Now you have a can of coffee. So these can be found at any Whole Foods store in Colorado um, okay. and also a few and far between states. You can buy these online as well at thehotboxroasters.com. This is what we send out, like our subscription services and things like that as well. These particular cans here, the little more simple looking, is going to be our single origin. Um, again, that's just the one single bean. Um, and then we have these cans over here that are a little bit more fun and kind of crazy, and that's because those are our blend cans. Uh, my personal favorite one is going to be this one here, which is French Press of Bel Air. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's a blend of Ethiopia and Brazilian coffees. So who comes up with the namings for these? So we usually kind of sit around at the end of the day when we have you know, a new coffee that we want to name and yeah. just drink a few beers and shoot the shit and <laughs> come up with coffee names. I love it, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And have a little bit of fun with it. All right. So we're in the canning area or is this the brewing area? Uh, I think it's the canning area. We do brew coffee and soda pop in here. So okay. I guess it could be called that. Yeah, because you got root beer or something going on over here. I can smell it. Totally. It's awesome. It smells so good. It does. Um, so yeah, these tanks here, these two are where we brew all of our cold brewed coffee. Um, this is the one we primarily use just so we can kind of control the batch size a little bit more. Um, we do about 420 gallons at a time of cold brew in here, um, which is a ton of cold brewed coffee. Um, from there, what we'll do is we'll put it in cold brewed kegs, um, which go to different you know restaurants, breweries, places like that, um, or we'll put it into cans, and we do that on this machine right here behind me. Um, this thing is really cool. Sometimes it makes you want to cry when you're using it, and then sometimes it goes super smoothly. So <laughs> that's just kind of how canning things works. Um, so the, basically the way it works is we're taking cans, so you can see these soda pop cans here. And we'll basically stick that pallet in this little elevator shaft here. Um, and that'll go up to the top, and you can kind of see that one lone can strangling off the side. Um, and they'll go on this track, and they'll start working their way back to the um, this thing makes it awesome because it's automated before we'd have to lift the cans up there manually and like shake them down. <laughs> you end up spilling more cans off than you do can. But yeah, so they'll make their way over here. Um, and here is where the magic happens. So these five here are going to flush the cans out with nitrogen because oxygen is really bad for coffee. And then these five are going to flush and fill the can with coffee. And it will work its way back this way. It gets dosed with some liquid nitrogen for rigidity. Gets a lid on it. And then this is where the can gets steamed up. 
and will make its way back this way. Um, it's going to go through a little shower and then it blows it off or blows water off of it with some air. And then we'll have a table sitting here and this is where the can will get a date code on it. We'll tell you not to drink past the Best Buy date and we'll put it in a 24 pack and we'll go to the cooler. So after we can up all that cold brew, we're gonna bring it in here. It needs to stay cold, so we have some cold brew in the corner over here next to some cakes. Um, they also store soda pop in here. So we've kind of finished up the tour on Hot Box Roasters, yep. and Mike is just giving us a tour of Oscar Blues. Yep, at Oscar. This, point. this is so. Oscar Blues Main Brewery, or one of the few, I guess, many at this point. Uh, they moved down here in 2009 from Lyons, Colorado, where they still are brewing a bunch of beer. Um, but this building is awesome. Lots of cool things going on in here. Behind me is part of our barrel aging program. Um, so this is going to be 1050 in bourbon barrels. That comes out every year, like winter time ish, like December, January. Okay. Um, it's always a phenomenal beer. So there's actually 1050 in there right now. Oh just yeah. Just kind of aging. Yeah, so you can see like some of these barrels when they come to us, they've lost a lot of their moisture content. So you fill them back up and that wood expands. But until it expands, it leaks a little bit. So <laughs> it, it smells really great in here for a little bit when these are leaking. So if you guys haven't tried 1050, you should. Um, it's uh, aged in whiskey barrels, which is pretty cool. I had no idea that that was the process. So it's only this particular one. So there's like the oh. core, or I guess it's like annually comes out. It's just normal 1050, okay. which is the Imperial style. But this one's a little bit more hard to get your hands on because it comes out once a year only. Okay, so limited runs. Yeah, limited runs. And we actually get to do, we call it Java Fitty, um, which is the barrel age in these bourbon barrels, and then we add our cold brew to it. Okay. And that's pretty phenomenal. That sounds pretty good, It's dude. so tasty. Can't go wrong with water. whiskey and coffee, right? Not no, at all. No. My two favorite things, honestly. No. Um, let's see over here. This is actually where Hotbox used to live. So, oh, no kidding. Yeah. This is where I first saw the old resting coffee. It was right on this loading dock over here on that Probatino. Um, so at one point, at one point we had a Volkswagen van parked in here um, next to our green coffee roaster that's in that room. There's a little black pipe hanging down. And that's where the coffee roaster used to sit. And that's where we did all of our packaging. Wow. So you guys have actually exploded. So you're actually in this small little space Mm -hmm. um, with Hot Box Roasters, you guys blew up and now you're all the way on the opposite side of the building in a huge section. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely been a nice change of pace. The b thing that I miss is this is like kind of a hallway that connects production to the main office of Oscar Blues. Oh, okay. Um, so we got to talk to people all day long and hang out and now we're kind of secluded back in our own space, which can be good and bad. <laughs> right. There's, there's nobody back there to catch him riding his bike inside. That's exactly With the mini is. ramp. <laughs> Right now we're popping into what we call the Oak Room. Um, so it's just a room that you can rent for events. Uh, they do barrel age beer releases back here. Um, there's a big TV screen that we play video games on in here sometimes. Awesome. Um, so this is a pretty cool room. We've got this really beautiful wall back here. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, all the chairs and light fixtures are made out of barrel pieces. Um, it actually looks really cool. I'll turn the, the real lights on for you. Colorado up there. Very cool. Woo! Yeah, this place is awesome, man. Set the mood. Set the mood. So straight back to those windows is another piece of the barrel aging program. So it's a condition. This is the room that you want to get locked in. Um, yeah, if you were going to get locked in a room inside of the Oscar Blues plant, yeah, this is definitely going to be the room. Look at all this beer, guys. So much tasty beer. So from the time the beer gets packaged, um, before it gets shipped, it comes immediately to this cooler. It stays cold the whole time. Um, and then when it's getting shipped, it goes on a, a refrigerated truck to a refrigerated distributor as well. Um, so we try to make sure it's always staying cold. So. Dale and Oscar Blues have a nonprofit as well that's called Candade Disaster, and they do disaster relief, 
Um, they do things that I really enjoy, like give kids bikes, um, elementary schoolers and things like that. Um, I've gotten to do some of those, Jeff Lenoski has as well. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool piece of it, which is drinking water. So they basically started this when the floods hit Colorado a few years ago. Um, they started doing really fun relief programs for the people at Lyons and surrounding areas. And then when Flint, Michigan went through their crisis, and they're still going through unfortunately, but they had no drinking water, they started canning up drinking water and sending it to them. Um, and they were like, this is a good idea, let's keep doing this. Uh, so we have canned up a bunch more drinking water. I'm not sure where this is going, um, but last year we sent a bunch down to hurricane victims. Um, I believe there were some that went down to Puerto Rico. So just doing some good, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the Candy Foundation has done amazing things, especially locally and for Lions too. I think they helped a lot with the, the major flood that happened down there. Oh yeah, long ago, and yep. Lots of you know help there. Um, anywhere that they can help, it's cool to see that they do that. So that's awesome. Getting back to the community. Totally. I mean, they they halt beer production and canning to do this. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty big. Yeah, it yep, amazing. it's pretty impressive. About this place is all of the funny things that you'll see around if you walk around. So here we have one of the funny things. So here's another funny thing. Uh, you gotta watch out for forklift traffic because they'll run you over. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Well, you gotta be careful because there's a lot of men working in tank tops around here. So, so one of my favorite things about Oscar Blues um, and the canning process is that every can that runs through the line gets a canned on date. But another thing that a lot of people don't know is it gets a funny message on the bottom of every can. Hi, Billy. And this one is for a brewer that's leaving today. His name's Willie, so they're telling him bye. That's awesome. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate you coming here on Hot Blues and Hot Box. We had a great time. Now we're about to drink a beer.